Hey, I'm Graham. And I'm Ryan. And this is in, no, nope, this is in depth with Ryan Lochte. What surprised me the most about Lochte is, first, coming into the interview, my perception uh, of him as this kind of outrageous playboy type figure was anything but the truth of who he actually is, like a, a nice, down-to-earth family man. <laughs> Whoa. Are you dizzy? <laughs> Usually when we pull up to people's house, we knock on the door, it's like their handler or their housekeeper. It was just Ryan. It's like, come on in, man. Parts of Lochte's interview got very emotional. He cried, his dad cried, some of us might have cried. The 2008 Olympic Games, yes. the gold medal in the backstroke final. Oh, shit. I told myself I wasn't going to get teary-eyed for this, but I just remember touching that wall and seeing a big WR, meaning world record. And I, and I won. There was bleachers on the pool deck where he came up, and we held each other. And I, I whispered, I said, today you're great. I love you. And he goes, no, 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 you're great. I felt like I was channeling my inner Oprah on these first couple tapings of the, the season. It's a rare anybody gets emotional during these tapings. And then the first several tapings of the, the new season, people were getting emotional. His inner Oprah. Who says that? I don't know what it is about famous Ryans, but they're f***ing sweethearts. That was the most my opinion of somebody changed so quickly. Because we all know the story of what happened with Ryan Lochte. Now, the swimmers did not call police after the incident. It was only after Lochte's mother told reporters that her son was robbed. The public generally seems to think Lochte lied about the entire Rio Olympic scandal, when, in fact, that's not the case. I just fabricated just one little part about the gun not being like pointed at my forehead. It was like four or five feet away at my chest. Um, that's the thing I fabricated, but everything else was true. For that mere exaggeration, he has been like incorrectly disgraced by the public and the, the media and really gotten a, a, a bit of a raw deal for no reason. I was getting death threats being like, you need to die. The thing that got me the most was the little kids being like, I used to look up to you and now I don't. And it got to a point where I was crying and I was like, Caleb, maybe if I like, I said, maybe if I like go to sleep and not wake up, it will be fine for everyone. Um, that's what was going through my head, and then Caleb basically kind of slapped me and said, you're, you're better than this. Like, don't let them win. You know what happened. Like, you have to fight this. Both of us had to do a lot of self-reflecting and still self-reflecting of just, you know, understanding things. What was it like seeing Ryan and Graham competing? Competing? <laughs> I did water polo also uh, freshman year of high school, so I thought I could swim at least okay. You realize real quickly how pathetically awful you are when in the pool next to a multi-time Olympic champion. Graham didn't have a chance, but we knew that. But we still had to do it anyway. Ryan didn't even come up above the water. Graham just flailed around like a deer that fell in ice. Seeing Ryan in the water, very impressive. Seeing Graham next to him in the water, not so much. By the way, I decided to, uh, a after seeing footage of that, I decided to shave my chest. Jill! You gotta do it. Jill! <laughs> now that oh. is a wrap.